We're going to convert all of our SAS files into partials, all of the ones that we want to ultimately be partials, which currently are all of our dash dir files. I'm going to go into the folder that I'm using and I'm just going to rename the directory files as partials. So I'll just put an underscore in front and we can go ahead and get rid of the CSS files because we won't need those. So we'll just go ahead and do this very quickly to all of these files. So now all these files are going to be treated as partials and they will not be compiled into CSS. The CSS will just be brought into our master file and we haven't set up the master file, but we'll do that shortly. So back in my project, I'm going to make another new file and this file is going to be saved in my SAS folder. And I'm just going to save this in the root directory of my SAS folder. And this is going to be my main.sas file. So this is the file that's going to actually pull in all of the directory files. So the sole purpose of this file is just to pull in our directory files, each of our little discrete modules that we're using as part of our project. So I'm just going to use add import statements and go ahead and set up statements for all of these. And all of the at imports are just going to go into the folder. So in the first case, it's zero global and get the global dash dir sas file. So I'll just quickly create this for the rest of my directories. I'm going to refresh my file tree and you can now see that all of the CSS files no longer are listed. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open my original project.sas file and we're going to be pulling some of these things out so we can place them into the appropriate files. Now, one thing that's happened is my reset file. We're going to no longer have this as part of the project one file. Actually, both of these imports are going to go into my global dash dir file. So let's go ahead and copy these and I'll grab the comments as well. I'm going to go into my global dash dir file and I'll paste these in. Now, currently the at import that's pointing to the Google fonts will work just fine. The reset file though is not in the appropriate location. Remember that we had left the reset file in the root. So let me go into my root folder. Here's my reset file and I'm just going to move this into the global directory. So now it exists inside the global directory. So when my global dash dir file requests the reset partial, it will be able to find it. And the reset partial is going to have the reset rules that we already specified. I need to make another new file that's going to be part of my global directory. I'm going to create a new file and we'll save this file into the global folder. And this one is going to be another partial and I'm going to call this variables. .sass. This is going to contain any global variables that I want to be part of my project. I'm going to click on my project.sass file since I'm going to be taking things from this file and I'll grab the comment as well as all of the variables that we've already defined. I'll go into the variable folder and I'm going to paste this in and you can see that here are my variables and I'll save this and now I'll go into my global dash dir file and we're going to go ahead and bring in the variables. Now I like to bring in my variables before anything else. So I'm going to list these before the reset. In this particular project, it wouldn't really matter if they were listed before the reset or not, since the reset doesn't use any variables, but I think it's just best practice to go ahead and use those as such. Now you can see here, I listed this as underscore reset dot sass, and here I just put variables. Remember that you could actually write it either way, but it is a little bit more succinct to just not include the extension. It doesn't need the extension when you see the underscore sass realizes that it has to be a sass file, so you don't actually have to add the dot sass to it. All right, we'll save that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the project file and we'll start to look at some of the other items that we can possibly move into some of our other partial areas. The next set of rules that I have have to do with some of my main elements that are within my page, some of the main HTML elements. So these are all specific HTML elements, body, H tags, paragraph tags, links, articles, things like that. All of these are what I would consider to be base styles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy 
starting from my body tag and going all the way down to my image tag, I'm going to grab these elements and these are base things. I want all the time my body to be styled this way and my H tags and my paragraphs and my links and my articles. All of these things are things that I want to have consistent and I want them to be styled as such on every page. So we'll copy these. We're going to go into our base directory and you can see that we already have an app import for base. That file does not exist so let's make a new file. This one's going to be saved in our base directory and we're going to call this underscore base dot sass and it is just going to contain these basic rules. And if you want to make a comment up here, you can, and I'll save that. And if we look in our project file, you can see that now we have a class for the image that is on the right side. We'll go ahead and we'll add this into one of our other partials that we'll be building in a minute. This is actually going to go into our modules layout, so we'll leave that. We do have a rule here for the header, and then we have a rule for the header H1. Remember I mentioned before that header and footer are gonna be part of our layout styles. So we do have a layout directory, and it's looking already for header, for footer, and for article. And I think now that I just realized, I had put the article rule inside of base. So we'll pull that out and move it to articles once we make that SAS file. I'm gonna make some new SAS files. So the first one is going to be saved in my layout folder, and this one is going to be underscore header.sass, and this is gonna contain my header rules. So I'll come into my project, I'll grab the header rules, I'm gonna copy these, I'll paste these in, and it is worth pointing out that the path to my images, remember, this is the path from where the CSS file is ultimately gonna exist. Our CSS file is just inside the CSS folder. So I will have to go up one directory, go into images and find dive. I'm not drilling to the image from where this header.sass file is, but where my CSS file will ultimately be. We'll save this. We're gonna make another partial. This one's gonna be called underscore footer. And again, it will go inside of layouts. And this is gonna contain our footer rules. So I'm gonna get my footer and my footer P rule that I have. We'll save that and then we'll make one more new file. And this one is going to be saved in my layout folder again. And this one will be called articles.sass and I need to make this a partial. And let's go ahead and get that article rule. And I believe we have all of these files being pulled into our layouts folder. Let's just double check. So here I have header, I wrote article and I named my file articles. So I need those to match so that they both come in. So I'll name that articles. And then I have footer, so that looks good. And I'll close some of these just to kind of clean up my brackets file a little bit. I also need to go into my base.sass file and I'm going to remove article. Remember we moved this into the article folder. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of that and I'll save. And then the last item that I'm going to create a partial for is going to be my image right side. So I'm going to save this in my modules and we have a modules directory. I'll go ahead and make a new file here. I'm going to save this in the modules folder and we'll call this wrapped items.sass. And again, this is a partial, so it needs to start with an underscore. I'm going to say image right side and I'll go ahead and I'll make a comment just so that I know what this is used for. And wrapped items needs to be pulled into the modules directory. So we'll use an at import and that should be good. So now I'm gonna go into my index file and before our file was pointing to project1.css, I'm now working from a completely different file. I'm working from my main.sass file. So we're gonna go ahead and write main.css and we'll save this. And I probably need to go into Koala and have it compile everything. So I'm just gonna tell it to refresh. And let's go look at our file in the browser and see if everything worked out okay. All right, when I double click, you can see that I have a problem and it's letting me know that I have an error. Sometimes you might make a mistake and SAS is pretty helpful because it actually is going to point to and tell you where the errors might exist. 
So if we look at the message it gives us right here, it says error. Indenting at the beginning of the document is illegal. So if we look back in the global.dir file, you can see that right here I have one extra space. I This is throwing everything off. I need to get rid of that space. So if I get rid of that space and I save my file and we go back out to the browser and refresh, now our file works just fine. Now, once you make a change like this, in some cases you may need to recompile your code. So if you're using the command line, you would just need to give the command to do that. Or if you're working in Koala, you could click on your CSS file and click compile to force it to compile. I had to do that in order for this to actually happen. But now you can see that my file looks exactly as it did in the previous movie. I have a CSS folder and here is our main.css so everything that we had in all of those separate files is now being compiled and brought into this one file. So even though I broke everything up into a bunch of just little individual components, it all still got brought in as one CSS file. I no longer need my project one.css either of these or my SAS file and I actually find that it's easier just to delete those inside of the directory. So I'm going to go into my SAS file and I'm going to select my project one CSS and SAS files and delete those. I no longer need those and in my CSS folder I probably have them as well. So I'll delete them just to show you that the page is functioning based on our partials and if I refresh everything works just fine and as you can hopefully see, by using the partials, we're able to break our code up into these little individual chunks. Now I know in the beginning, it can be a little bit confusing trying to figure out where each of these particular parts of your CSS should go. But if you start using the partials, I think that you'll find that it's an excellent way to consolidate your code and to keep things organized, especially when you're dealing with a several thousand line file of CSS. If you can break your CSS up into these individual components, it's much easier to manage and to work on.